Hi guys, welcome to Zeitgeist Mastering. So in this video, we're going to have a look at some of the best EQs in test and apply some curves to them that are similar throughout and then get an accurate comparison between some of the best in the business. Plugins have come a long way these days and they're certainly a lot more transparent, a lot more accurate than they used to be. So we're going to look at EQs like the uh, FabFilter Pro-Q, Isotopes Ozone 7 built-in EQ for their mastering suite, um, we're also going to look at the DMG Equilibrium, which is a great EQ, and the Brainworks Digital V2. Um, Brainworks do some fantastic plugins and give a wide range of, range of options, so I have to include them here. And we're going to put this up against some uh, really accurate hardware, which is the Custom Audio Germany HDE 250, which is basically modeled on one of the best EQs in the business, which is the Sontech 452 EQ. So I've got that here, and I'm going to get some curves going, listening to some music, and then apply those same curves with the plugins so that you can A, compare the plugins with the hardware, and B, compare each plugin with each other. Now, it's not a conclusive test because it's pretty impossible to do that. Uh, certain music requires certain things, and each EQ has got its minor differences that are very hard to account for. But it might give you some idea um, into your decision making about which EQ is the best for you. Um, there are obvious pros and cons between each one and obvious differences with the hardware, which I'll go into in detail as we look at this video. So hope you enjoy it. Let's get on the screen and see what's going on here. That I so So here we are in our project here. We've got our acoustic sample playing that you just heard now, which is from Australian artist Joel Javier. And we've got our rock sample from artist Christian Ortega. And we've got our electro sample from Berlin producer Christian Bachmann. So three samples, three different settings, and I'll, I'll go through and explain how I've set this up for you to do the most accurate test possible. As I say, it's not conclusive because it's impossible to get everything exactly the same, and there are nuances, little differences in each of the EQs. So as I mentioned, for this test, we're going for the hardware side of the test. We are using the Custom Audio Germany HDE 250A high definition equalizer, which is a five band EQ um, that operates in left and right mode, but also, which is awesome, it has a mid side mode. When we push this button, we go into mid side mode. Okay, now I've done a full review of this EQ if you want to know more about it. Um, the reason I'm using this for this test is it's a very, very musical EQ um, and very clean, very accurate. So it's not adding a huge amount of color or you know, any anomalies. And so we can get right in there and hone in on really what we're doing. Now, one thing I want to mention is that when I listened to these songs, what I basically did is tuned with the hardware first, finding the best settings I thought possible, being a little bit lenient in order to really show what the EQ was doing. So maybe going a little bit extra. One important thing to point out there though, is that the hardware is generally more forgiving than plugins. If you make boosts, for example, on the hardware, on this particular hardware, I can boost right up to 12 decibels in the high frequencies and still, you know, get away with it. It's not something I necessarily would do, but you can get away with it. And if you go and do a boost like that on something like the Brainworks or, you know, any of these EQs, the Equilibrium, you may not get away with it. Now, in terms of how it's set up, we're just going out simply routing. I've, I've disconnected everything else in my mastering chain um, because I do use this EQ in my mastering chain. Uh, but for the purpose of this test, I've disconnected everything. So you're just going through the Lynx Hilo mastering grade conversion. So out through this device, back in with quality conversion. And I'm just going to show you very quickly um, using the Waves Q Capture and Q Clone, um, the accuracy of this EQ, so that you don't just take my word for it. If we go and have a quick look now, I've got Q Capture set up here. 
take that off mute and I put it in record enable mode. That's sending out a frequency sweep. I'll have you let you have a quick listen. It sounds like this. It's a bit unpleasant, but that's a frequency sweep that's going out through the hardware. And then in our Q clone, we can set it to capture and we will hear exactly or we'll see exactly the representation of what our hardware does when we turn it on. So if I turn it on now, we've just got the high frequency boosted at about 8 decibel at about 15 kilohertz. Turning it on, and as you can see there, that's replicated instantly by this curve. Now just to show you the accuracy, if I, for example, put both sides onto a high Q setting and then go and sweep down, let's say, to 2.5 kilohertz, you can see on the screen that really accurately we've got a boost at 2.5 kilohertz. Okay, so that's just to show you how I've sort of looked at the curves and then gone through and applied these curves. As you can see here, these curves, I've gone ahead and applied them with very, very similar settings, practically the same settings. And so when we go through and have a listen in the comparison, you, 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 this is so that you know what's been done. Now, we'll have a listen to the hardware at just one of the samples now, just to show you how it's done. I'll turn off this Q capture now. And also in the project, I've just put a limiter on the main channel. It's really not doing anything. Um, it's just for safety reasons, and it's got a cut at minus 0 0.1. Um, so it's really not doing anything. It's not adding anything. And as you'll see in the download pack, you've got level match samples. Now, basically, the way these are done is by using New Gen Audio Master Check. And each sample's been played, and then I've level matched so that the um, the original level and the processed level, so when it goes through the EQ that we've set, is the same, okay? So that our EQ changes are not just making it louder. But you've also got that EQ um, applied level setting, so that will be louder, as I feel that this is a better representation of just what the EQ is doing. You can feel it more, and you need to be able to feel it to tell the difference. So let's have a listen to our third sample, which is the dance sample. And we'll just have a quick listen to a few of these EQs. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn my hardware on, on all the channels, and put it in mid-side mode. That's how I've done this track. All on. That's what it looks like. Let's go and turn that on and have a listen. Bypass. So there you go. That's what it sounds like through the hardware. What about through equilibrium? That's through equilibrium. Through ozone. Bypass. Back on. Bypass and let's go back through the hardware. And let's get up Fab Filter Pro Q2. Let's bypass Fab Filter Pro Q and have a listen to the Brainworks.
Hello, Zone. So very subtle differences. That's why you've got the downloadable samples. You really need to listen on a good system to be able to tell the differences. And, you know, as I said, these settings have been set very, very as exact as possible. So, you know, hope you'll appreciate that. Um, and there are subtle nuances between each of the EQs. Now, I'll just go into a very quick synopsis of what's different about each one of these EQs. I'll start with the Brainworks Digital. Um, this EQ has a lot of functionality. It's great for um, very accurate treatment, some surgical treatment. One of the reasons it's probably so favored is the fact that we can easily solo, for example, the side signal or the mid signal so that we can really tune that side signal alone. And for example, when I hold down a frequency, I can really hear that frequency. So it has that soloing function, which is very, very useful. And I quite often use this free plugin, the BX Solo, just to listen to the side signal when I'm using my hardware. So if I'm listening to the hardware like so, I can now treat my hardware each side in mid-side mode. So that's really cool in, in use with the custom Audio Germany HDA250. Um, that way I know what I'm treating on the sides, etc. So yeah, your brain works and it's also got the um, mono filter option. So, you know, you can make everything below a certain area mono, these sort of things which stand out and you can add stereo width with this plugin. So other than that, everything else it has, uh, it's got the DSR, which is also an added bonus, present shift and bass shift, which just changes the curve slightly to give you some more intuitive ways of changing, you know, getting a, a nicer sound. Um, there's some of the key things. I'm not going into every detail because it'll go on forever. Um, with your ozone, um, you've got the mid and the side over here split separately. So you can look at it separately. And, you know, each band's totally configurable with your general options, your high pass, your low shelf, your bell, etc., etc. Um, but what's cool is you can choose digital and analog mode for each band. And another cool thing with the Ozone is that you can use this function here to basically level match um, so that when you bypass on and off, you don't hear volume changes. So you can hear just how you're changing the balance of the frequencies, which is pretty cool um, just to have there handy. So that's a few things about that. Then there's the Pro-Q2, which has all of the same functions um, very well known EQ and I used a lot, um, but it has these phase options, zero latency, which is, you know, operating very fast. Then you've got this natural phase mode, which I found, find much more like analog hardware, great to use. And then there's linear phase mode, which uh, you should know what linear phase is all about. So it's a sort of accurate phase EQ, if you like. So yeah, natural phase mode, that's what I've used for this test. Another cool feature about this one is that you can adjust the scale. So if you like the timbre or the envelope that a certain EQ curve has, or maybe maybe it's too intense or not enough, you can go ahead and just so easily change that scale. Okay, so that's a feature that some don't have, and this one certainly does, and I really like to be able to use that. You can also do EQ matching with this one. Um, various other things. It's, it's an all-rounder. Then you got DMG, another fantastic EQ. It's fully customizable. You can add bands as you wish, delete them, turn them on and off very easily. And you can do things like solo your mids, solo your sides within, and you can do auto gain again, so level matching. Um, other things you can do is change the type and you've got a, a load of different types here that you can choose from, which will change slightly the character or the way the EQ sort of shapes and sounds. So a little bit like a filter type, if you like. So there's a few differences uh, between each of the EQs. And that's how the project's been set up. I won't go into detail, um, as I said, 
I've set the settings on the hardware and then I've got my presets which I bring up here's the electro one here's the acoustic one and then that's applied to the samples that you can download and listen to and compare so please do that please go through the samples with accuracy um, you know compare them have a listen I didn't want to do it in the video, A, because it's very hard to tell the difference in a YouTube video, and B, because it'll go on forever, and I'm, I'm yapping away, so it's better to listen in the quiet of your own uh, surroundings with a good system. Hopefully you've got a good converter, good headphones, etc. Um, otherwise, you may not be able to pick up the differences well enough to know what works for you. I know what works for me. Um, I love using the hardware. I'm a little bit spoiled, but the main reason... I love using the hardware is because of the intuition because you know coming up with a curve like this on a plug-in is a little bit counterintuitive I find and you know to come up with this it's, it seems sort of like a heck of a lot of work to dial in settings like this and when you do it on the hardware it just happens naturally and you're only thinking about the music so that's you know that's my thoughts on why I like it so I hope you like those little tips the comparison there um, I've tried to keep it brief as possible. Um, do subscribe to us on YouTube and keep in touch for the latest videos. Um, hopefully I'll be doing some good ones throughout the year. And, you know, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, also check us out on Facebook, Zeitgeist Mastering. And we'll catch you very soon in the next video. All right, guys, see you later.